there was an Algerian philosopher, hey, 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 called Malik bin Nabi. He said, what did he say maybe a hundred years ago? If you want to destroy civilization, disrespect teaching. Disrespect teaching. Humiliate a medical doctor. And sideline a scientist and scholar. And give the value on the platform to the ages, the ignorant, who do nothing and say nothing and they get the billions and the hundreds of millions of dollars. Also, other narration saying, if you want to destroy a nation, destroy the family. A family where the mother is the cornerstone of society and of humanity. Destroy the education system. Destroy the icons and replace them with different icons. That means change the history. And allow the agents, ignorant, deaf, to be the spokesmen and women who can educate people and the same scholars. Also mention the richness of society that is not measured by the amount of money that the society has. I have seen some of the societies or countries extremely rich, but extremely underdeveloped. You can measure the rich society by the amount of ideas, ideology, coming from the people who are thinkers like you. Idea can create civilization. Idea can destroy corruption. Idea can build renaissance. And the idea can create civilization again. So, let me give the example. If you have a disruptive flood or earthquake, the flood or the earthquake will destroy things like buildings, roads, and others. Don't let it to destroy the ideas and the thinker to kill them. If you allow this to happen in society, you destroy the society. So when I was talking yesterday to the young Syrian, and I was talking about education. Education is not an university degree. Education is not a certificate. Education is a process of learning. From the time you understand to the time you die and you meet Allah. This continuous process of education, it's the one step. Learn from whoever next to you, whether he is above your knowledge and education or less. A farmer or a mechanic or a cleaner or a security man, a guide or somebody who collects the rubbish from the road could be highly knowledgeable than any one of us. Because education is a part of knowledge. And knowledge is something that we need to see all the time. All the time. All the time. And if you think that you are the most knowledgeable, Allah gives us a great example in Quran, in Surah Kaf. When Prophet Musa, salam, was one of the most determined prophets, messenger of Allah, said, I am the knowledgeable. Said Allah said, no, no, Musa, you are not. Then he sent him a, a man, a man, just an ordinary man, and asked Musa to go and meet him, and told Musa that he will teach you a knowledge that you don't have Musa as a messenger of Allah. It was not good, alayhi salam. Musa was impatient of asking questions and not following the teacher. The teacher at the time was a good. He told him, the condition of me going with you, if you don't ask questions, 
and this I explained to you what happened. But Musa could not be able to see him making a hole in the boat. He said, oh, you are doing something wrong. He will be drowning. I told you, Musa. I told you, Musa. He said, I'm sorry. Then he found him killing a young beautiful man. Boy, 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 boy. boy. He said, oh, you can make a big crime. Musa, man. He said, why do you do that? He said, I told you, Musa. I told you, Musa. Because Musa did not have the knowledge. Despite the fact he was a prophet and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the last and not least, which is the cause of both of them, Musa was also impatient of putting the condition on himself. But he don't have the patience. And the dimension of patience was the Khidr has. And he told him, Musa, if I ask you any question after that, we will be separated. So they went to our village. And they were very hungry. And they asked the people for food. The people were very mean, very bad, very uh, not hospitable. Okay? And then Musa found a falling wall. And he started to rebuild it again. And he let to explain to you a man in the history was only mentioned in this instant is teaching one of the greatest uh, messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Musa alayhi salam to the teacher could be anybody it could be anyone could be Muslim could be non-Muslim could be a boy could be a woman could be a man could be an old man could be educated not educated but you need to seek the knowledge and forever you become knowledge seeker, not knowledge speaker. Don't become knowledge speaker, become knowledge seeker. And above every knowledgeable is the knowledgeable. And the knowledgeable is Allah, the source of all the knowledge. As I mentioned a few days ago about the size, the unimaginable size of the universe. Allah has created it. How? Nobody knows. The unimaginable size of the universe and the unimaginable sizes and number of the galaxies inside the universe and the unimaginable distances between this galaxy and this galaxy and this galaxy and this galaxy. And nobody can understand. But we still do not believe in Allah. Believing in Allah is a process it's starting by following then comprehending, then letting the, 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 the belief to sit in our heart and mind and soul and to dictate our life. Let your belief to dictate the way your life will be. That's why Allah gave us the mind to think and make the choice and did not give the mind to the angels. So the minds are Musayyad and have been, have been created systematically organized to obey but you have been created systematically organized to think what to do but Allah gave you the mind but Allah gave you the mind is asking you to think and this is the right and this is the wrong and the choice is mine to take the wrong knowledge or to seek the right knowledge and since that we agreed that we are so knowledge seekers, not knowledge speakers, we should choose the right way of our life. The way we behave, the way we learn, the way we work, the way we get dressed, the way we even have our hairstyle. All these kind of things. We should make it to make the one who is the source of knowledge, to open the gates of knowledge. And the source of knowledge for us be more educated, more knowledgeable, and more guiding individuals. More guiding individuals. Don't ever think that Dawah needs somebody to be qualified from an Azhar or qualified from an Islamic school. Dawah is love. When you love the people around you, you invite them 
to the best of what you have of knowledge, to the best of what you have of deen, to the best of what you have of manner, to the best of what you have at home, when you give him everything at home. Once upon a time, when the Prophet ﷺ was invited to a poor family, and the husband told the wife, what do you have? She said, we have the supper of our children. He told her, put them to sleep. And when you bring the food, it was all light. You know, the candle. Just put off the candle. And with your mouth, make the voice that you are chewing the food. And they did. The children did not sleep. They did sleep sorry, without having their dinner. They were acting with actually pretending that they were eating. And that's it. Next day, Allah inspired the Prophet to say, tell him Allah was was very wondering from what this family did for you, Muhammad. Allah was wondering of how love they have to you, to prefer to you, to prefer you to the children and themselves. That's why they've been mentioned, because of the love, the amount of love they put on the table to receive with it the Prophet Thank you. I love you, even if you don't love me. <laughs>